helicopter attack. Hello, young one. Wow. Uh, are we having fun? <laughs> Yo. Yo, are you having fun with Wash? Oh yeah, I'm having quite uh, quite a blast. Oh well. So I think uh, my response to the heligender thing. Uh, well, I don't. So this could either be a, I guess a a way to reject heligender, but accept mm -hmm. some xenogenders, or it could be, I guess, a different understanding of what of what heligender means. Uh -huh. So the way that I just see it is that. Uh, when you refer to somebody's gender identity or say you are a gender or you express in a certain way, um, you are referring to the common understanding of what a gender is, right, in society, like the social construct, right? So it would be, if we're talking about the gender spectrum, it would be somewhere between like what are gendered characteristics between men and women and how do people fit upon that spectrum. Uh, so when you refer to identity, you're trying to sort of say, well, there's a culmination of those characteristics which can best be described by a certain identity. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're, so you can either say, well, heligender doesn't make sense because it doesn't refer to anything that we understand on the gender spectrum, uh -huh. or you can say, or you can say, well, heligender can make sense if what you mean by heligender is some characteristics which are signified by helicopters, right? Some people memingly say something like, well, it's very strong and robust and uh, it's very offensive. It's well, very, how does very that relate to the, like that. yeah. How does that relate to the gender spectrum though? Sure. You can say that being very strong and robust and very aggressive could be gendered characteristics, right? So you would say anything that I could possibly connect to the gender spectrum becomes a gender? You'd have, you would have to argue it, I'd say. Okay, so I would say that well, this... It would, Go ahead. it would specifically... Well, so it would specifically fit inside the non-binary uh, label, I think. Okay, so in that reality, I've talked about this before, I could accept that this reality if you would like, that's perfectly fine. My issue with it is then calling it transphobic to not validate that, uh, that specific identity. That's where I take okay. issue with it. Yeah, huh? I don't, yeah. I I don't I don't care about like the transphobic. I don't think Well, the it's reason why I think Yeah, the reason why I think that matters a lot and there needs to be a, a stronger conversation about that is obviously because it, what it materially means is how much you actually give a fuck about it, right? Do you actually believe that there is a um, an ethical need to be able to have this prescription be uh, morally uh, ground out, potentially to the point of moral condemnation, if it doesn't align with the? Uh... So I, I would say there is a. Mm -hmm. So I would say there are two different conversations, right? There, yep. there is a conversation that I care very deeply about, and that is the conversation about what is true. In mm -hmm. a sense of like what we can agree, this is like this is what is the most logical interpretation of these things. And then there is the conversation of well, what would pragmatically work in society, or like what would lead to better conversation sure. and stuff like that, right? I don't necessarily care too much about the second thing, but I understand why some people well, think it's no, no, no. Well, perhaps I'm not describing this well. It, it relates to what is true. Because you you give me a logical reason why, like um, we the social, uh, uh, you give me a logical reason for the social necessity for the word transphobia to exist, but you do not apply it to this new form of gender that you're describing. Why? And and this might just be me having a like a specific, I guess. Uh... A specific signifier is I wouldn't necessarily call it transphobic if you're not being it intentionally transphobic, right? So, so no, I don't yeah, think, let's so, say I'm intentionally saying you are not helicopter, you are not a helicopter gender. Would you say that's transphobic? Well, well, yeah. If they if they specifically argue that they are, and you and also okay, so if you agree, so if if we're having a conversation, right, and you agree with me that such a thing as a helicopter gender is possible. Um, and then you then proceed to say, but I don't care. I'm not going to call you that. Then I would say you're being transphobic. Okay. What makes something transphobic? Um, if you're discriminating, uh, intentionally somebody 
based off of like a, a I guess them being trans. Okay. Why why what is the social utility of trans the you the word transphobic or transphobia? What is why why would we invoke this as a term in comparison to other forms of uh discrimination? So for instance, you're wearing a white t-shirt, I think that's cringe. Why isn't that transphobia? Why isn't that phobic? Why doesn't that carry the weight of the word transphobia? So I would say transfer, transphobic is just a specific signifier. It, it's like a, it, it's like saying you are being discriminatory and then adding the reason why you're being discriminatory. Yeah, but what I'm asking is why sh should we, why ought we care about transphobia more than we care about like me making fun of like the clothes that you wear? Like saying, oh, that color is pretty cringe. Uh -huh. Why would we care about transphobia more? Why should I be sure. concerned with I, it? I would, I, would, I would say that would be because it's easier to change the way you dress than to change the way you feel about gender. And so you would say just it's easier to change and therefore it's... it's okay, yeah. so anything hard yes. to change... So your argument would be anything hard to change should not be made fun of? Well, I would say... In, should be i guess you should be more wary about making fun of somebody for something that they either have a very hard time changing well I'm, okay so make... being more wary doesn't relate to transphobia what makes transphobia bad in comparison to other forms of discrimination like here, it's, here's it's very a, here's hard to change how you feel about your gender identity okay and so it's very do you agree that it can be very hard to change your perspective on the world uh, yeah Okay. Do you think that I should discriminate against people that are like bigoted in the perspective on the world? Um, depends on what you mean, right? So, so I let's so say I make I, fun I would, of them. Make fun sure, of them. Sure. I so I'll I'll try and uh, rephrase it, and you can tell me if you agree. Okay. So I would actually say that I don't think you should uh, necessarily make fun of people for being, for example, conservatives or Republicans, right? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good thing to do personally. I, and okay. I, I don't think people ought to do that. Right. That why, why though? Because of what you said, right? I don't think, cause don't it's think hard it's to change. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily their fault that they hold those opinions, right? It's, it's a, okay. it's an, it's a, it's a result of how they grew up and like the societies they exist in and stuff like that. Okay. What about like a fascist? Yeah, same. Okay. All right. 100%. Just trying to make sure you're consistent on this. So you think it is immoral to make fun of these people? Well, I, make fun of is a is a okay, like sorry. different ways of making uh, fun. Yeah, yeah. Be, I, I I hold make them the butt sure. of a joke. Um. Yeah, I probably I probably wouldn't do that. Like like in terms of like if you're trying to discriminate against them, right? I I wouldn't. I would say you probably should not do those things, right? And there's different degrees of doing that right i myself have certainly engaged in humor or, or jokes against like uh, republicans or whatever um but i don't necessarily think that's a good thing and we should probably not do that okay so would you agree degrees. so then would you would you agree with the idea that political ideologies can be genders because political ideologies can have gendered characteristics as well um well i wouldn't i wouldn't say that the ideology uh is a gender i would just say that they are referring to the same word and to describe their gender Does well the word like... refers to the ideology so for instance if i said i'm tanky gender the reason why i'm tanky gender is because it relates to some strong authoritarian like leader perspective that i have on the world and i believe that that's embody i embody those characteristics you think I can be sure. tanky gender? Sure, but I wouldn't say it's the same as being a, a tanky, right? Those refer to okay. different things in that context, right? Okay, so then as long as I can just make an argument that it relates yeah. to some gendered uh, characteristics, it's a gender? Well, it can be, I would say, but not, not necessarily. Wait, why, right? why isn't to, it necessarily yeah, well, a gender? Well, you have to... Okay, well... Sure, I guess what I mean is that you are not necessarily that gender, but you could be, right? That's what I would say. Uh, okay, right, so, so, that, so, 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 it is, so it is a gender, but I'm not, and, and it's a possible gender that I can ha have, but it is Somebody isn't. can have, but you are not necessarily that gender, right? You would 
Mm -hmm. I guess you would have to identify as such or, or have a strong inclination that you are. Yeah, so then I'm, I'm just, from my perspective, what is the social utility of transphobia? Transphobia, excuse me. What is the social utility of these terms if it's in relation to such a broad spectrum of, uh, uh, of things to the point where I'm, I can't even make the argument that like, Hey, I just don't see you as tanky gender because your argument is it's only transphobic. If I fall within the system itself, well, obviously if I agree with you, I'm going to agree it's transphobic. So if, if I'm outside of your system, that's usually why we have these words is to compel people outside of the system. You are being racist. You fall outside of my purview and perspective of how I view racial dynamics and I'm using this moral condemnation to be able to try to compel people to stray away from the actions that you are performing or for to uh, illustrate to you that the actions that you are performing are different. You understand? So I think there's a, yeah, I understand. I think I understand at least. Um, so I think there's a difference between uh, being racist, the definition, and being racist, the condemnation, right? So I would say being racist and being transphobic, the definitions, uh, mm -hmm. makes sense to me because they describe a real concept, right? It, they describe discrimination based off of a specific thing. But I would say the condemnation, I think that's a different thing. And we can talk about what, what is the utility of the condemnation. And I would say, generally, I actually don't think there's much utility in the condemnation, right? Because if people, okay. usually when people are racist or transphobic, they actually either don't believe that they are or they don't know that they are. Sure. They, right yeah, I would say that's pretty common. So, it's very rare that people are racist and they are like, yeah, I'm racist, fuck you, I fucking hate whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I mean, you would still argue that the social utility would be to appeal to people outside of your system, though, right? That person is operating outside of your system, you said it in that yeah, example. Yeah but, but it, so, yeah, but the utility there would be to convince them of what is the truth of the matter well, right? no no the truth yeah, is that true, it shouldn't be. true but your argument is that you cannot call somebody transphobic that doesn't exist within your perspective you said explicitly if you believe in your definition of gender then you you would uh be transphobic but what if i don't believe in your definition of gender can i not be transphobic well, because i don't well, fall under your definition well, you of would gender? be trans well sure you would be transphobic uh from my perspective right but not from your own Okay, so say. then, yeah, you would be making an appeal of transphobia. How would so then you have to flush out logically why the system of uh, other people's systems of viewing gender is inferior to your system? Yeah. You understand that, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, and then so how would you say that the system of viewing gender through like non-binary and uh, uh, being, you know, radically radically reduced rel in relation to what you're talking about here to essentially being um not just simply uh not exactly falling between uh you know man or woman or being a gender or even potentially um uh like uh was gender fluid and sure. stuff yeah, like that I, I think I understand. how do you so yeah I, how so do you I, how so do you say that that is an inferior system Sure. So for me, it's all about what I think makes the most logical sense. And I don't think much about like the societal applications because I think society is in general better when we act within what is the most logical. So that's how I would ground that. And I would say for me, logically, it seems to be that uh, men and women uh, are two different genders that exist. And it seems to be that there are people who find themselves somewhere on a spectrum of men and women, um, which can be defined as non-binary. So it seems to be that non-binary people exist. And from that, I don't think that there is a logical or a good argument or a good logical argument that distincts uh, non-binary from what people would consider to be like xenogender. And I don't think there's a good distinction there. Um, and if there is, I mean, I might change my how about, mind. I mean, but I have not how about the distinct, how about just the distinction that it can all, it all applies to people, humans? Like every everything that normally applies to gender would apply to humans. It's it's a sure. human thing. Like an attack helicopter isn't a human. A turtle isn't a human. It's but Nazis a human. Are human. Yeah, Nazis are human. That is true. So hu is human gen or is Nazi gender valid from that? No, because it's a political ideology. It's not just well, some matter a, of mm -hmm. political ideologies are based off of, of humans, right? Or like human yeah, things. Yeah, true. 
Yeah. I wouldn't say that it just makes it just being something that is human makes it a gender. I would say that it being a like characteristic of in well at least my my personal argument is in relation to uh sex. It has to do it makes some derivative from some kind of uh, uh perspective that we have in relation to how we view ourselves physically and materially. And I don't think being a Nazi so has reflects to, so any just, kind of physical sure, so just, shit. Yeah, just so I'm so I'm sure that I understand because I'm not sure that I'm following. Um, yep. So you're saying it has to relate somewhere to the sexual characteristics of the person? No, or? it de it derives from sexual characteristics and the 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 mannerisms what that. that I'm sorry, sorry <laughs> it, it it stems from, and then what stemmed from that is behaviors and attitudes that we have in relation to those sexual dimorphism, essentially. That we have sure. sure so what would you say are sexual characteristics uh would testes uh breasts having uh the difference in skin uh that men and women tend to have men tend to i believe have rougher skin um on average things like this and how that develops characteristically amongst Did, people would you say would you say something like being more aggressive is a sexual characteristic because it comes from hormones um, I th I mean, it could, yeah, if you, if you want to, yeah, I'd say it could be, yeah. It definitely sure, plays so, into it, sure. Sure, so what if I say, well, uh, I act very aggressively and mm -hmm. authoritarianly because of my aggressiveness, I want to mm -hmm. control everything and stuff, mm -hmm. like, if I think th the best description of that is, a, like, I'm a Nazi gender, what would you say to that, right? It appeals to the sexual... Right characteristics of the hormones which yeah i don't i don't agree with things. extending i don't agree with extending it to just any kind of uh i think the word would be analogy or or line that you could draw with whatever i don't agree with that idea that because i can find something that i feel resonates with the ideas that i have present that that means that it is that thing. So in relation to a man or a woman or uh, the reduced scope that I would argue on non-binary in relation to your scope, I would just state that it, it's just simply it is what gender is as a concept. What you're describing are separate types of identity, right? That's just it. If you want to identify as Nazi... You can. That's just a separate form of identity, right? So what it if, falls within so, the umbrella. I, I, this is just the way that I'm identifying the word gender yeah. because I think that concept has utility. In reference to directly our, our sexual characteristics, I think that makes sense. Hey, Hans. Oh, what's up, Hans? Yes, we're doing gender debates. All right. Um, do you have anything... Uh, Oh, take, yeah. take a look uh, at Hans's shit, everyone. Right. What's yeah, up? So, so, so the response I would say to that is that, um, so, so I would say one might. So, if we're if we're taking issue with, okay, so I'm I'm trying to draw a distinction between are we taking issue with the word or the concept, right? So, if your issue is just with the word, uh, mm -hmm. Nazi gender, right? If if your issue is with oh. the word Nazi in that specific instance um what would it would it just be sufficient for me to say well uh i just call it a nazi gender because uh i don't have a better word to describe it at the moment right but the concept still makes sense within the gender purview or would you say you take issue with the concept that one cannot uh make an analogy or like a metaphor to describe a gender which uh, you can make conform. an analogy or a metaphor or whatever, but it's not gender in my in my purview. So well, let if me. You're, if you're seeking to describe a set of gendered characteristics, that's what I'm saying. Right? Well, that, no, no, that's yeah, and I don't, I don't think extend, I don't think extending gender characteristics to, and I would argue that this applies to everything. I could make black a gender under this purview. Because I just associate, let's say I'm just like racially stereotyped, I associate black people with being strong. So I'm black gender. What is your argument against that? Well, the same that I, I get, well, the same with the Nazi gender, right? If you make a sufficient argument that but that yeah, is the case and that's how you feel, then yeah. I think that's fine. 
Okay, so then, every, so then you understand that not, logically again, everything everything would be a gender then, right? Well, no. Well, okay. Well, yes and no. Uh, so again, there's a there's a real distinction between the word and the concept, right? So if you are black gender, you are not um, black the race, but you are a gender. Okay. For which you use then the word black how, to describe it. Is it not a is it not a red flag to you that you have to qualify it by saying you are not black the concept, but you may be black gender in relation to being black, but when it comes to being a man or a woman, you are a man or a woman in in every manner and sense of the word. Wouldn't it be that we are probably describing two separate things and that we're well, probably just not using the word gender are. properly? Sure. So a few, so a few things. First off, we are absolutely describing two different things, right? Uh, Sorry, two so separate much. categories of. Oh, um, we. I guess we can argue about that. Um, but first off, I would just say, just because somebody something requires more explanation, we have to think about it more. Doesn't mean that it's false, right? <laughs> it just it seems like that's a very not. Simple... That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you cannot. So, like, for instance, you, Dario, unless we want to get into transracialism, you cannot be black, right? Okay, if you cannot be black, how is that concept the same if at any point in time you can be a woman? Any point in time throughout your entire life, you can instantaneously become a woman in every sense of the fashion. How is that concept the same if you can do nothing to ever become black? How are those concepts the same? They're not. Right. And understand. so if the concepts are not the same, do you think that maybe we might be describing two separate concepts and that it might have social utility to call gender something that where you can become something in its full aspect due to just simply emoting or, or whatever uh, in, or whatever I'm not, you want? I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that I'm following. So are you saying that race and gender are two different concepts? Because I would agree. Is that what you said? Well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it, it is, but I mean, I would, the reason why I'm describing them as different things is because in relation to what a lot of people, at least who share a similar opinion to me, are arguing is that we just shouldn't have gender just be a form of, any form of identity. It's just, it is identity. Well, we shouldn't do that. Well, it's, so, so, okay. Uh, I'll I'll take a step back and I'll try and just talk for thirty seconds and you can okay. tell me if you understand. Yep. Okay. So, gender. Yep. I would say g gender cannot be anything, right? Because gender refers to the uh, societally accepted gender characteristics that we agree are like gender correct characteristics or or things. Even I would even agree with you, right? For what you said, right? It has something to do with. Uh, or like is a derivative of, of sexual characteristics of some uh -huh. kind, right? That's how we build gender, mm -hmm. right? So I would say from that, we can we can say that non-binary people exist, right? It's a category that is not may or not man or woman, okay. but it's it's somewhere on the gender spectrum that is undefined, right? So within this category, I would say there are millions of different gender expressions that we can call different things. Can you give me an example of something that isn't a gender? Well, there are many things that aren't So again. Okay. Yeah, can Step you give back. me an ex can you give me an example of something that isn't sure. a gender? Sure. I th I think sure. I think there's a miscommunication here. Um so I would say there are many things that aren't gender. Almost all things aren't gender, right? Uh -huh. But we can use words to create metaphors to describe our genders. Okay, then what you are describing is a nickname for the way that you feel, or like a, um, it, you're, not you're not describing, you're not, yeah, you're not describing new genders at all. You And well, nor would I would argue that it's transphobic to not, you're just a man that really vibes with the USSR. You're just a man that really vibes with this or that. That's, that's what you, you would be. Sure, sure, would you, Sure. So would you be satisfied with me just saying that they are all the gender of non-binary, but within the gender of non-binary, there is many different types of non-binary, and those just describe, uh, try to describe a different type of non-binary. Would that be better for you? 
No, I would say I, I would say a better word would probably be an aesthetic. I think it would genuinely be. I think that's those are you what you're describing is an aesthetic. What you're saying is that you're pulling some kind of um you're not actually a entity. Light with moral you, what you are saying is I really vibe with the idea of Nazism. So you know what? I'm just gonna call myself Nazi gender. And if what your statement is, is that there isn't anything more to it than just I I enjoy that idea in reference to a gendered characteristic. And you said yourself, it's in reference to de uh, deriving from sexual characteristics or sexual dimorphism. Then what you're just basically saying is, for instance, me right now, I identify as a man, but I also, I, I, you know, I really like superhero shit. I like cape shit. You know, I like Lex Luthor, fucking brainiac shit and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I'm, I'm brainy. I'm a brainy brainiac kind of dude. But I'm a brainiac right. kind of dude. I vibe with the aesthetic. I just, that's what it is. You're just talking about an aesthetic. What is the difference between what you're describing and an aesthetic? I guess would be my question. Sure. Yes, there is, there is no difference, but it is a subcategory of aesthetic, right? It's, it's a subcategory of aesthetic which, has, aesthetic, which has to do with how we conceptualize gender in society. Okay. Right? That's what I would say. Sure. So if it's a subcategory of aesthetic, can you morally compel me to have to view you, uh, your aesthetic as being valid? Is that a moral compulsion that you can make? Well, yeah, sure. Why? Because you ought to be nice to people? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, you're, so I, I typically, personally, when I'm making moral prescriptions, I like to make do more than this, right? There is some kind of historical precedent, some kind of actual need and to be able to meet the merit of what we're arguing. So for instance, uh, I, my argument around transphobia is the reason why it is worthy of such incredible moral condemnation is because of the necessity for this to be a, a current thing that uh, to be accepting of trans people is such a moral necessity that it and, and can cause so much harm that it could potentially bring people to suicide and has brought people to suicide. Right, and so, but, yeah, but, the, if I, yeah, but if I tell you there is a hmm? a, a list of like a, a thousand people who are heli gender, yep. and they are so, uh, um, I guess so attached to that concept yep. that they actually feel suicidal when people don't yep. validate yep. Yeah. that. Yeah, and so my my argument has to deal with cultural pervasiveness and systemic institutionalization or systemic. Uh, I guess it would be it would be uh, pervasiveness, right? That's what the argument has to be. So I would like to give you a separate example. Would you say because I think you are we've we finally I've laid the groundwork. Would you say it's transphobic for me to say you are not a fan of Batman? Well, it depends on what you mean when you say not a fan of Batman. <laughs> Wait, it, hold on. If your argument is it depends on what you mean. Can you give me a world where it is transphobic? Because if it depends on what yeah. I mean, that means I could say, so yeah, give me the world yeah. where it's transphobic to say yeah, you're not yeah, a fan yeah. of Batman. So, so, so again, so, and ev I, I can feel the chat lolling, right? But there's a very, what I'm trying to draw a distinction between is the word and the concept, right? So, so what you're saying is you are not a fan of Batman, right? What mm -hmm. I'm trying to draw a distinction between is and I, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this sufficiently, right? So, so what I'm saying is, if you're telling me you are, um, you believe that you are a gender, and that gender is called not a fan of Batman, right? Well, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, that's not my point. You said the reason we would call this transphobia is because it's rude, and it's mean, and it has to do with gender, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay, would you say that if there is something equally as bad as transphobia that is me saying that you are not a fan of Batman? So if somebody says you're a fan of ba I'm a fan of Batman to me and I say, "No, nah, I'm not going to recognize you as a fan no. of Batman." Oh, wait, so you would have to hold clarify. on. You just, would have to make I just, the, Okay, go ahead. I just want to I just want to clarify so you're not talking about gender, you're just talking about well, yeah, being a I, fan. So of yes, we've established okay. that in your yeah. mind I can call somebody transphobic for being rude. Not for being like per, uh, um, institutionalizing or reinforcing some institutional power or reinforcing some kind of uh, 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 
massive uh, pervasive problem that being transphobic just means being rude in relation to to gender. So I want to hear what you say about me saying is it equivalent? If somebody says I'm a fan of Batman and I go, no, you're not. Is that the same as transphobia, but just with a different name? I'm, it might, depending on how you how you describe it or like the severity, I guess. Um, if if that's what you're looking for specifically, yeah. Right? I, so, I, so, so, I'm good. so if somebody, so so if that is like if somebody that is like their entire life is being a fan of Batman and like it's uh mm -hmm. it's like a very important thing and I'd say they would feel suicidal if they weren't like if if people don't recognize or if they make fun of them or like if they don't accept that they are a fan of Batman right then i would mm -hmm. say yeah sure it could be like in the same severity okay so you would say being rude at all about somebody's gender is transphobic um sh sure depending on what you mean by rude yeah okay so let's say somebody like i'm cis would you say somebody saying something rude to me about gender is transphobic Really, not sexist well, or? Well, if you're if you're if you're cisgendered, right? Yeah, if I'm cisgendered, and, and if they make fun of you for being cisgendered, I would say yeah. That or, would be well, transphobic. Wouldn't I it just be not, like well, sexist? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. We could it's have not, a discussion well, like, yeah, about yeah, whether yeah, or not yeah. sexist is an actual proper no, word for being sure, yeah, yeah, discriminatory yeah, probably, towards yeah, gender. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably better. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be transphobic because it wouldn't it wouldn't be transgender specifically, right? You would be cisgender. So yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be transphobic. So do you think that there could be some social utility in a word that describes a institutional or systemic discrimination against people of a specific gender yeah sure okay do you agree that there's a lot of people that might use transphobic as one that applies to trans people and that usually when people are just... talking about being transphobic, they're not talking about being rude. For instance, yeah, I wouldn't I, say... Yeah, yeah. So wait, 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 just a mm -hmm. quick quick note there. I would say yes, but I would say yes in the same way that um, some people might say that uh, when you're being racist against somebody, you are referring to the institutional like prejudice plus power in society against that person. And some people might just say, well, you're being rude in a racial way to somebody, right? You're You're demeaning them in a racial context right there are two, two different sure. yeah yeah i don't i don't disagree with this at all I, I, sure. I don't necessarily disagree with that but in reference to what i personally care about for social utility purposes as well as logically i believe i've made the argument as to why i think that essentially this idea of gender could uh, honestly make anything a gender and i know what you're trying to say is that the underlying concept itself doesn't become a gender but the the argument that it seems like you're making is you're just making the argument that an aesthetic is a gender which i don't know why we would define the well, term that way sure and this might be a language barrier thing um which is actually a real thing with me so sure <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> Uh, so, so when I'm saying when I'm saying aesthetic, what I just mean like the, I guess the way you perform, the way you socially engage with society, the way you dress, the way you, yeah, all of these things like exist in a societal context. I would say that is what I'm referring to, and if that is in a way that is generally seen as like a gendered thing in society, or like ref or like is a derivative of sex, or however you want to describe it, right? If if those are the things you're trying to explain, I would say you are trying to explain a gender okay, in so some kind of way, and then that, you might just be okay. doing a, a good or a poor job so of then explaining it. If that is your definition, then I'm assuming you'd have to agree with this. In a society where gender has been all entirely abolished, if somebody walks up to me and says that they are a woman, I can just say no, and it's not transphobic. Do you agree? Well, yeah. If we don't have a concept mm -hmm. of gender, then you okay. couldn't be trans phobic i would say yeah even if people are trying to bring the idea of gender back i couldn't be transphobic well, correct well yes because 
gender specifically refers to the, I guess, the societal construct of what we define as gender in the current society, I would say. I, well, it, it's a, I mean, if that was true, then we would not open up the concept of gender, right? Like well, that would be, we'd well, have to, we have to make some parameters yes. that exist outside well, of the yes. cultural norm. Well, well, yes, I, well, yes, I would agree uh, in terms of like, we wouldn't be opening it up, but I would just, I would just say that it is already uh, more open uh, or open enough to contain this concept, right? And I would say that is the concept of non-binary. That is the concept of non-binary allows for what I'm talking about to exist specifically. Well, that wasn't a culturally pervasive thing, at least in the West. I, well, I mean, you can argue that. I've I've read somewhere that non-binary people have been cataloged to exist since like seventeen hundred. No, hold on, cataloged like to that. exist. We're talking about cultural pervasiveness. Those are two different things, you, and, and you and I both know that. By and large, so, nobody yeah, yeah, really okay, yeah, knew yeah, yeah. culturally that non-binary people existed yeah. for. Uh, a little bit sure. ago. I, I misspoke. I misspoke. So I'm just trying to explain this in real time uh, uh -huh. without having written anything down. So I, I might say something wrong sometimes. Uh -huh. um, so what I was trying to say is the concept of gender uh, has been, I guess, existing for a long time, right? And if we logically look at the concept of gender, uh, we can say, well, we have had male or man and woman um, and we can logically say, well, there are people that exist somewhere within the spectrum of man and woman, which necessarily exists the need to describe that sort of thing, right? Or we can just, we, I guess we can also just say we don't need the word to describe it, right? But we can acknowledge that the concept exists. Does that make sense? Right, there's, yeah. So the concept of gender is societally what we have known exists for like hundreds of years, mm -hmm. even in the West. And we can recognize that within the concept of gender, many different descriptions of gender exist. Yeah, and my, my argument would be the descriptions of genders that you have described are just like nicknames, but not actual genders in and of themselves. They're aesthetics that stem from gendered characteristics. Like this, what, you, what you're saying is any fashion thing, anything that stems from anything that could be considered gendered is a gender. Because it's, well, it's something that I embody that is like an aesthetic or a form of myself or whatever. So like being goth would be a gender because it can stem from a, a gendered idea. No? So, well, yes and no, <laughs> again. Uh, so, so the answer to that is, and I'm going to repeat this many times, um, is that when you say you are... So I would not say being goth in the sense of like what we consider to somebody who is goth, I would not say that is a gender, right? But I would say you can be a gender that you call goth gender, which describes a set of gender characteristics for which wait, the best name what, that you can come up with is goth. Wait, why? what makes these concepts not gender in and of themselves? If they derive, if let's assume it derives from some uh, gendered characteristic, what makes that not a gender? So, like, what you, what you're saying to me is it just can be a gender if you want it to be. What makes it a gender? I would say it it is a gender if it is uh, if it refers specifically to the gendered characteristics of right. society. So would you say a dress is a gender then? Because it refers to a gendered characteristic about how about the way like women look and how to accentuate women's figure? A dress isn't wouldn't be a gender, but it can be a gendered characteristic. Wait, why wouldn't it be a gender though? Because it does appeal to a certain gendered characteristic, which is like the feminine form, quote unquote. I mean you can you can say that you are dress gender no no, no. What what, okay that is simple right you said that your definition of gender is something that appeals to gendered characteristics a dress appeals to gendered characteristics why is a dress not a gender are you there yeah i'm, I'm just thinking about if i'm misunderstanding something or, or how to respond i guess um, so,
So I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong. So what you're trying to say is that if something appeals to a gendered characteristic, that thing can become a gender in and of itself. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is based on your description of what makes a gender, I'm making the argument that it seems like a dress is a gender. A dress is not only an article of clothing, but is also a gender because it appeals to gendered characteristics. My argument is that an aesthetic isn't a gender, and what I think you're describing is an aesthetic, so I'm establishing it to well-known aesthetics, which is like articles dress, of clothing. Sure, but I don't even think it... So are we talking... Fuck, this is so confusing because we might be using words differently, right? So when you say address, are you referring to address the object? Yeah. Address, address, dresses are often made in reference to a feminine characteristic, feminine um, and womanly uh, stereotypes and archetypes in order to accentuate feminine characteristics. That's what often dresses are made. Or we don't even have to say often. Let's assume there was a dress that was made this way. Whoa, crazy. A dress was made to enhance feminine characteristics. A wild thought. What makes that not a gender? How isn't that a gender by your definition? You need excess things like I was appealing to. It's humanly. It ha refers to a human thing. It refers to, in order to be able to make, to bridge this gap. How is a dress not a gender? Sure, but the issue with your definition is just like, what is a human thing? Right? A dress is also a human thing. Well, sure, sure. I would refer to, I guess, an emotional uh, outlook or perspective on, on life. Like it's a, a feeling, not a... Go ahead. Sure. So, so what, would you say that it, if it has the capacity to feel emotion, that it is a gender? Well, no. I, well, hold on. I want to get your answer to the dress question. Is what I just gave you that example so you could bridge the dress question. How is a dress not a gender? Because your argument is that aesthetics, or at least what I have come to un understand as aesthetics, is a gender. So, what makes a dress not a gender? I guess I would like the best answer I could give. It's just that uh, it would have to be a subset of characteristics, right? Or we might even say well, that it, a dress, it, it, or ahead, we sorry. might even say that dress gender can exist, right? That, that doesn't necessarily well, no, take no, anything a, away a, from a material dress being derived from characteristics that we have culturally believed to be feminine or womanly. What makes that not a gender? Because it's it's a different category. How is it a different? Describe to me what makes it a different category. That's what I'm asking you for. What makes it a different category? You can't just say it's a different category. It's not the same. It's not the why is it not the same? Because it doesn't refer to a thing that um, humans are. So it has to be take something. On. Go ahead. So it doesn't refer to a thing that humans are that take on these gendered characteristics, it is in itself a gendered characteristic. I think that's, yeah, I think that, that makes sense. It, so, right, it, so we it, wouldn't, it, so go we, ahead. So we, yeah, so, so with the heligender, right, mm -hmm. we wouldn't say the helicopter is a gender, but we would say that somebody can be a heligender. So you're right, what you're the, so hold on what what is the distinction you're trying to make in relation to the so is is it that like it's not like so describe specifically because I I feel like it was almost with you there but then that made it weird describe sure. to me so, the the issue there sure so what I'm what I'm saying so if I have to like conceptually try to explain this. Yep. I might be explaining it wrong. So maybe if you rephrase what I explained, then we can get further back and just take it one more time. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is a dress is not a dress. The object is not a gender uh -huh. because when we talk about gender, we talk about the way that humans uh, interact in society, right? That's, that's what that concept uh -huh. or like gender. So, okay. Gender sure. Sure. In, I, in I ways understand. That we, Except gender yeah, yeah, so a human interaction is a gender. That is a comp oh. necessary component of, sorry, not that it is in its totality. It is a necessary component. And since a dress in and of it's, itself isn't a human interaction, it's just an article of clothing, it's not a gender, right? Uh, well, it, has not, it doesn't have to do with human interaction yet. Well, what do you mean it, it doesn't is, have to do with it human? It is not a, yeah, that's, that was a bad Okay, so then. Um, it is not, uh, just. 
it, it's hard for me to get my thoughts out when you talk at the same time. Sorry, because <laughs> I, I don't have these things on the fly, right? So, so what I'm I'm trying to explain is, um, I would say a gender. The definition of a gender is um, the way that uh, humans try to express their um, well, yeah, the concept of gender. Okay, so is it's... the way that humans try to express their gendered expressions okay. in society. All right, so you would say then wearing a dress is a gender. Because wearing a dress expresses the way well, that I can... feel as a gender. So wearing a dress, the action of wearing a dress is a gender because I'm trying to express myself. Well, no. Wait, why? Right, because... Well, no, because that wouldn't be... Um, like that would be an, I guess that would be an action, right? You're yeah, an action that I took action. for a reason, right? And that reason is sure. you to might, express you my gender. Action. Sure, you might do that action for a gendered reason, right? But it, in it, in and of itself, it is not a gender. I would say. Why not? Because you said that d interactions, human interactions. That have uh, underlying of gendered uh, uh, underlying of gender, as we've described it in relation to at least something we've ta meaningfully tacitly agreed upon was just uh, sexual dimorphism, or in relation to sexual dimorphism. If if that is the case, then why wouldn't just wearing a dress count? Because I'm expressing myself through an interaction socially. That is gendered. I feel like you're grilling me a lot on, I guess, a definition of gender that I don't think any of us agree with, right? So I guess I can look it up to make it more clear. Wait, no, and I'm say, asking just, you for, but I'm asking you for yours. That's the point. Of, my my point no, but of I, I think yeah. we agree. Sure, but I think we agree on the definition of gender. Well, yeah, well, no, no, no. I I think the. Wait, what the, is your? The, okay, can you give me your definition of gender, and then I can say if I agree or not. Well, my def my definition of gender is as it relates to uh, sexual distribution or the sexual dimorphism, and its relation to uh, like whether you're a man or a woman in relation to male or female, not the physical form, but the characteristics that have uh, developed as a result of. Uh, cultural uh, pervasiveness of these ideas being like their roles in society and what have you and the difference that we have had socially in like our day-to-day -day lives like men uh, you know uh, wearing fucking boots or specific types of boots or like coats and then women wearing specific types of shoes like high heels versus and specific types of coats and stuff like this is being just derivatives of that and and, I, say, and, sure, yeah. and I, I would say I agree with that. Yeah, and, and the, where our disagreement lies is whether or not the aesthetic or the what you would say is the gender quantifies as separate genders. Like, because what you're trying to no. say to me, what you're trying to say to me is that hella gender is a gender under non-binary because you can make an appeal to it referencing gendered characteristics yes yes exactly. yes yeah. and i just believe that's Those... an aesthetic and so well, to relate sure, it sure sure wait so can you can you tell me what is the dist what is the principal distinction between uh any non-binary gender and that gender well non-binary gender would be how you fit into uh well the the reduced scope would be that whether or not you feel as though you fit as a man or a woman, whether or not, and if you do not feel like you fit as a man or a woman, you could fall under that umbrella. If you are, are a gender, you completely disagree with the idea, the concept in and of itself. Um, maybe you are uh, gender fluid and you feel as though you bounce around a lot, so you want uh, non-binary as the title because you are in a a, a fluid, a gender fluid. Uh, um, uh, state, I guess, would be said, how you would describe that. Um, uh, I mean, I could think of others, but yeah, that's probably how I would describe non-binary. Wait, okay, so... Non-binary is necessarily in relation to the gender binary because it, it, it necessarily references the gender binary as being without or outside of that binary. Yeah, but it references something outside, like, principally. Yeah. Right? So outside of the sure. binary, yeah. Sure. Yeah, exactly. 
right? So if something is outside the binary, mm -hmm. then it is non-binary. Yeah. And if something is non-binary, then it is gender. The gender is non-binary. No, no. So we would have to just... Okay, hold on. What makes a non-binary gender a gender to you? Like, what, what, what makes non-binary... What if I said to you being black is non-binary? What would you say? Well, it, it wouldn't... Well, being black in and of itself wouldn't refer to a gender unless you're Why saying not? that you are a black... Unless you're saying that you're a black gender. Because well, because the way you're the way you're describing it, the way the, the vibe that I'm getting in relation to what you're describing in non-binary is that non-binary just means like anything that isn't binary uh, within the binary gender, sure. which sure. I don't so, think so, is true. Sure. So my my issue with this conversation right now is that it seems to be that I think we agree for the most part about actually these definitions, but the issue that I think is that it feels to me, and obviously mm -hmm. you would think that I'm wrong, but it feels to me as though that uh, you are not sufficiently describing the difference between something like a heligender and uh, the difference between like what you would define as non-binary genders in general, right? So, so I don't think you, in your view, that you can hold the position that something like a xenogender uh, can can exist or not exist, but that non-binary in general is a thing that exists and makes sense right so so i don't think it's sufficient to just say well when well, no, you so describe non-binary no, no, no. you just you don't describe the concept you just give me examples of non-binary genders right but it can be anything right so you have to circle the concept yeah i believe the concept is in reference to sexual dimorphism and the the roles that sexual dimorphism plays in society and I don't think one of those roles is a helicopter, is my point. So what if, so what if I'm trying to reference the roles yep. of the sexual dimorphism, but I don't have a good enough word to describe what I'm referencing, and I'm using Fantastic. helicopter we call that, as we, a metaphor? 100%. We call that an aesthetic. That's what an aesthetic, you are describing the definition why? of the word is. Why? What, what do you mean? What, that is the definition of the word aesthetic. No, but what is the difference between... Uh, a non-binary uh, uh, gender and mm -hmm. an aesthetic in that in that specific point. in regard it's just that it's not in direct relation to the uh bimodal sexual distribution you're not stating that hey i reject this gendered stereotype i accept this gendered stereotype i'm i don't fall within this gendered stereotype you, what you're doing is doing a separate thing you're saying I don't reject or accept these gendered stereotypes. I think that these gendered stereotypes or these attitudes in relation to gender also like vibe with a helicopter, also vibe with a wall or vibe with a turtle or whatever. Yeah. And that's an aesthetic. Yeah. You like what I'm describing is do you accept high heels for women? Do you reject high heels for women? Maybe you're a man that want to rock some high heels. Run that bitch, right? The, like, do you accept these ideas as being for these class? Do you accept them as being for you while fitting in a separate class? You know, do you accept them? And that's what usually we're referencing to. But what you're describing, it sounds like, is a step beyond that. Not just whether or not I accept high heels as being a woman, or accepting high heels as being a man, or accepting high heels as being non-binary, but whether or not I accept high heels and I think they vibe with turtles. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the distinction I'm drawing I here? Think, I, think, I think I understand the, the distinction, or maybe I understand. So I, I'll just try and explain it again. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong. So you're saying specifically uh, that you think gender always necessarily refers to man or woman and that non-binary is just... Uh, which of the characteristics you reject? Or no, no, no. It always corrupt. refers to gendered ideas, right? There are some things that exist that are gender neutral. For instance, shoes. Like just a sneaker is pretty gender neutral, right? There are women that wear sneakers. There are men that wear sneakers, right? When we run, when we do day-to-day -day activities, these are pretty gender neutral. We could make the argument that more men wear sneakers than than women, but... These are Can pretty you find gender out neutral, if something right? is gender neutral or not? It's, it has to do with the distribution of people that wear them and the cultural pervasiveness of how they're propagated for people to wear them. 
So like so an example. More, so if more so if more men wear sneakers than women, would that make it a, a man thing? Yeah, by cultural definition, yeah. We I'm assuming we both wait. agree on that. Sure, but wait, but how okay, so so for something to be gender neutral, does it have to be an exact parody fifty fifty? No, we could we could have it be like um, a, a close to, we could give like rough estimates as like, we're not going to count each individual person that's ever worn a sneaker and say it's gender neutral. It's so whether or not like we feel that there's a massive cultural push for us to wear Y or do X. This is part of the reason why I would argue that transphobia needs to be rooted in a systemic uh, uh, approach to whether or not it's transphobia is what at least people refer to as transphobia. And isn't wouldn't just be, like being that rude. Be like a, wouldn't that be like a self-perpetuating system, right? So if you're saying, mm -hmm. how do we find out if something is gender neutral or not? Yep. But you first then have to define everybody who does it as either a man or woman. And then yeah. you can find out whether it's gender yeah. neutral and or if, not. But, yeah, but, yeah. If, but by that, sure, but by that definition everybody is either a man or a woman before you can find out whether it's not it's gender neutral and then people well, can no, no, because, a man no, or the woman. idea would be that if the people that do it don't conform to gender then it would be gender neutral it would be gender i guess maybe a more precise term would be a gender action it's just there's no gender applicable to that action so for instance let's say every single person that played video games didn't have a gender they like went full a gender was like yeah i don't identify with any gender right then that would be an agender action. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying, but I think there's like a, a hole in the logic there, or at least I feel like, and maybe I'm not just understanding it properly. Um, so I feel the hole in the logic is that what you're saying is in order for us to describe something as an agender action, we have to first consider the genders of everybody who does it. But if we are considering the genders of everybody who does it, then principally those people cannot be doing an age interaction because we would be considering them in that group that we use to calculate whether or not it's an age interaction does that make sense am i just rambling <laughs> I don't know. well no no it's no that's for whether or not the action is per so hold on if i identify as a man and let's let's take the example right i identify as a man i'm doing a brand new action that nobody has ever done right and brand first new action, yeah. For, first of the, first of the kind, right? I'm the first person to I don't know turn on a light, right? I'm the very first person to ever do this, right? You could be, you you know maybe we could argue a certain threshold or whatever, but you could argue then that that's a man's action because I was the first person to do it. If you wanted to make that argument, so I think it. I think it, gendered it, actions, huh? Well, by, by your definition, then, would all actions be gendered in some way? Not necessarily. It depends on the cultural pervasiveness and the, uh, and the way that it's propagated as well. But, huh? If you're the first one who does it, mm -hmm. right? So would it then be a man-gendered action? Like I said, we can make arguments about whether or not you, and a certain amount of people need to do it or a certain amount of cultural pervasiveness, because I think that's a, a big argument as well, is... Um, is that shit so i mean maybe it's yeah it's possible if you want to argue it that way in my personal perspective it has to also deal with like how people feel doing it in relation to like media interpretation so a good example is like wearing makeup for men right men could let's say most men wore makeup let's assume that most men wore makeup right now but they just didn't tell anybody right and that was the case. It could still be seen as a womanly action because of the cultural pervasiveness and the taboo behind men wearing makeup, right? We, we could agree that it's still gendered for women to wear makeup and, and, and it's uh, gendered against men to wear makeup due to cultural pervasive and media to intention. I understand that. I guess what I'm not connecting is how can something be a non-gendered action within that system? that you're describing right how can we say yeah, something is, is, is if there's close gender. to parity if there's close to parity between the thing close to 50 50 if we argue Wait. that there isn't a strong pull Wait, but, from but society just, there isn't a strong pull just, from culture sure but didn't you just argue that um it doesn't matter how many people do it uh for it to be considered that thing right but the men and women right if me most men mm -hmm. were makeup in secret I it could I, still be wait, a did you did thing. you not hear me when you started i said also the cultural pervasiveness as well 
is what you would have to do. If it's not marketed particularly or taboo particularly towards men and women, you would make that argument. Wait, but what? Okay, I might just not be following. So why does it then make sense with the with the parody in terms of like deciding whether or not it's an agender thing? Then it doesn't matter how many do it, just the cultural no, it, 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 it. Yeah, it can't. Yeah, the cult. Well, that's how you would tell if it's parody. We can't just sense that. Like that's part of the reason why the cultural pervasiveness matters. We can't just sense. Yes, fifty percent of the population of the planet is uh, of men is wearing makeup which is not how it works right we have to uh, appeal to media identifiers to be able to make this see be the case and media telling us that it's taboo or wrong or right is going to inform our actions that's usually how it, how it works we feel more comfortable doing something that people that look like us walk like us and talk like us do and unfortunately, we take that to a pretty cringe degree where we'll do that in relation to like race or height or skin color or hair texture and shit. And then it, you know, we have issues where we don't feel, feel comfortable doing anything because, you know, nobody, uh, no, or we feel comfortable doing things we probably shouldn't because like certain people do it who look like us. Right? That's the okay. idea, right? Sure. It's so like how, how does, a lot of people believe black people so are committing. Society, so how does society decide something is not gendered? Generally, day to day people in society usually through cultural reinforcing attitudes, but they in, infer that it means that most people are doing something or most people are not doing anything based on the like taboo, right? Hmm. It's kind of like uh, it's like women watching uh, porn or masturbating, right? Like. Plenty of women masturbate, but the idea that, like, it's seen as, like, not a culturally pervasive thing. It's, like, causing a lot of people a lot of stress. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think I think I might... Maybe this is the difference, is that I'm, I may just disagree that something isn't gendered in society. What I, do you mean? I, 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 might, I might just think that everything is gendered in some way, right? Because gender, I would say, just describes uh, like the social interactions of people. Okay, uh, then how can something become not gendered? Yeah, I don't think it can. So you don't think it's physically possible to have gender be abolished? Uh, it's not possible. For, for that, we would have to abolish the concept of gender, or we would have to say that... Uh, yeah, we would have to abolish the concept of gender. But I think as long as the concept of gender exists, then I don't think gender can be abolished. I don't think if there is an equal representation of like women and we Genders. men wearing. So like, let me give you an example. What about women and we men wearing backpacks to school? Do you think that's gendered? What are backpacks gendered about? Well, I mean, I, I, I would say there's probably not a parody in terms of like backpack usage i would say maybe there is i mean like, is, a... I, th I think the first thing that comes to mind is school where everyone wears one sure i guess yeah i guess maybe you could argue that it has become i guess less of a gendered thing because i think probably wasn't it probably men that went to school way more than women in the past? And well, then now you it's say women work. going more than men. Ugh. Well, in the higher education side, but not necessarily in the lower. But yeah, oh. regardless, I don't think that's sure. I don't. I don't think that's important. Yeah, maybe. Maybe actually, maybe maybe something can become, I guess, less gendered in the way that we understand it. Maybe that's a fair argument. Okay. I think ultimately our disagreement just lies at like what makes a gender a gender worth describing under the umbrella of like is it a gender or is it aesthetic and I just feel like describing in relation what people do with the gendered uh, expressions that they have it's probably better to describe what makes a gender, not what people relate with it. 
So it's not that you relate wearing high heels with an attack helicopter in whatever way you decide, right? I'm not super against that. If you want to do that, Godspeed and, you know, 07, it's, you know, do what you, you want to do. I have no issue with that. The issue then to me is when we call that in and of itself gender. I would argue you have an aesthetic stemming from gendered, uh, uh, gendered characteristics or um, gendered uh, expression. You have an aesthetic that you want to express, right? Um, and, and that's what it is. Like uh, people that uh, paint their nails, dudes that paint their nails. This is a gendered uh, expression that usually uh, women perform that's more commonly expressed by women. However, it is, you know, a gendered expression and it's an aesthetic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's anything more than that, right? And it's not anything more because just because the person didn't say it wasn't a gender. I'm assuming your argument would be that like it, it could be a gender if you just said I am, you know, paint my nails gender, right? Or, or, or well, whatever, yeah. nail painting well, gender. I... Yeah, so the argument I would make is that uh, I would say you can have a gender within the non-binary umbrella, which has a set of gendered characteristics, which would both me and you would agree are gendered characteristics, right? In some sure. sort of way. So let's if we, if we imagine like a bunch of sliders, right? If I say, well, the first slider is ten to the left, and then the next one is three to the right, and the next one is seven to the left, right? That's that is a setting you can have within non-binary. Yeah, and so like I don't have a mm -hmm. I don't have a good description for or have a good a name for that. So I yeah. will call that name paint your nails gender. Right, right, right. But I'm so not saying mm -hmm. paint your nails is a gender. I'm saying I have a gender and the name yeah. of that gender is paint your I, nails. I think what you're just when you're talking about describing things on that slider, I don't think that makes it any different than what it is. The concept that you're describing they are just non-binary, right? That's what they are. Okay, I'm, I, so I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, so like a good example is I'm not the most masculine man you've ever seen in your life. I know, right? Crazy, wild, right? I would say my slider on the man's, yeah, on the man's dude, scale. Hunk, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Chad, dude. <laughs> Super um, Chad. Nice. <laughs> on the, uh, on this slider, my manness on the slider relative to even my own slider, it's not super high, right? But I don't think that makes me a new gender. That just makes me a not super masculine man. And now in reference to non-binary, this gets a little bit weird because then you would be a not super, what, you know, non-binary person, right? You could say not super masculine non-binary person, not super feminine non-binary person. Some people run with this. I am a slightly feminine uh, non-binary person or a very masculine non-binary person or whatever, right? You, you have arguments like this, but I understand what you mean on that gradient, but I don't think that's a new gender. I think that's just describing how far you are in specific yeah. attitudes in regards to the underlying sexual character or sorry uh, gendered characteristics that I we're think, describing i th i think uh, i think uh, as you say we can break bread with that um i think that's fine like i i can 100 percent accept that yeah. uh if you like if you i guess if you accept and understand the concept of like there are different sliders in the non-binary and you just prefer to just call that non-binary in specific like i honestly i do that most of the time as well um, I don't like just calling people different gender names and uh, pronouns as well. It's it's annoying. So I just use like non-binary for everybody. Um, so that's how I treat it in practice. Uh, if that's your conclusion, then I, I think that's, that's fine. Um, when I say that I think that many genders exist within non-binary, I just mean like there are different sliders. And I think you can call those sliders, I think, different genders in a, in a, like in a logically consistent way, but I can also understand if people just want to call it non-binary. Sure. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's in my, yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah. I just want to draw a pretty strong distinction in my opinion between what I view as gender and not gender for the purposes of um, essentially, uh, a, a social utility for understanding. Hey, this is uh, th this is protected in this way, or you 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 know what I mean. I don't. You I essentially I, mean. I don't. I, I, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I would say, and sometimes it's unclear to me as well when we'll have these discussions, it's it's unclear to me when somebody says they are, um, I don't think anybody says they are a helicopter gender, but if somebody did say they are a helicopter gender, it's mm -hmm. unclear to me whether they mean that they are um, they are a helicopter or, or they have like characteristics of a helicopter or if they just mean that they are non-binary and they describe something within non-binary with that name. Like yeah, that's, and that's I, I, yeah, I just want to avoid that, like, I don't know. I feel like the we would need a new word for transphobia that relates, maybe we could argue it's systemic transphobia, similar yeah. to racism. We could have systemic transphobia um, in regards to uh, this because... It's the problem that I'm having is just that if we describe like me saying that, like, I'm not going to call you an attack helicopter is transphobic. This is wildly different than the systemic transphobia yeah. that exists. I would, I would, I would yeah. agree. Okay. Yeah, 100%. I, and in the same way, Hans, I think Hans made an argument. I don't know if you would, you probably agree with this, right? Um, where I think there's a diff when we talk about helping people and sort of the pain that they feel in society, I think you can make a coherent argument about um, sort of the uh, the discrimination people face in society based upon the societal norms that exists, right? So I would say um, we if if somebody wants to to change, let's say have like medical surgery surgery or medical transition whatever to transition into a gender which is more um conforming with society to more adept societal norms i think those people probably face uh face more discrimination before and would transition into something where they hopefully face less discrimination right so we yeah, can so, conceptualize that mm -hmm. based upon and that I would distinct that from somebody who is like, well, I am currently uh, within a gender, like, let's say I'm currently like both a man and identify as a, or I'm both a male and identify as a man. Right. And I want to transition into something that is non-binary. Let's say I want to transition into like a helicopter or whatever. And mm -hmm. right? I would say there is a distinction there. Uh, between it, you're trying to become something that society does not accept. Does that does that make sense? Sure. I don't, just yeah, I... The, the, the way that I view it is that there's a big difference between being rude and being discriminatory in a way that I actually genuinely think should be afforded protections. And I think the way that I view people being called you're not uh, uh, turtle gender is on the same level as me, not, me saying you're not a fan of Batman, right? Like, it is not something that I think should afford you special protections. I don't think sure. you should have a special protection to be, like, legally or even morally upheld to have to say that somebody is a fan of Batman or turtle gender right well, okay I, okay this mm -hmm. this might be actually interesting wait do you so do you think people should i guess be legally held accountable for being for like saying racist things or like saying transphobic things because i actually don't think so well it i i would argue that it would depend on whether or not it incites violence um okay i wait, think what it, would your i guess mm -hmm. what would your i guess you don't have to be uh, very, uh, you don't have to be very pervasive, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but like, uh, like, what do you mean by inciting violence? Because we can all say, well, yeah, like JQ just, is a really great example. I think, I think JQ is a, is a pretty great example of something that like can incite violence very easily by spreading misinformation about Jewish people. Wait, so do, okay. So, so you think people should be able to like what go to jail if they spread jq stuff enough no, or... no no not just like jq stuff enough but like if it's like lie lying about the nature of um people's occupation to the point where in which you are inciting people to uh go out there and do it like 
um, I don't want to say it on stream, uh, but like if somebody don't is say saying, it. yeah, if somebody is like saying that Jewish people run the world and that this Jewish person runs the world and they have very reasonable understanding that their words are going to incite people to cause violent action and they overtly say like we should get this person we should go get them we should go it's like uh stuff like that i think yeah should be protected i guess that wouldn't be racism it would just be inciting to violence with a racial undertone that's would probably say, yeah be, that's what i would say would, right? would probably be that yeah yeah so i yeah so so you wouldn't so right so you wouldn't say you should be able to face severe consequences just for being racist or transphobic right you would, well, you would I, say I mean, specifically if you are inciting violence well in in the case of speech well discriminatorily we could say that like not hiring black people because they're black is a racist action that i would want to be illegal sure but then it would be i guess then it would be the action itself not the fact that it is i guess sure it maybe, would be maybe the fact take... that it's racist yeah Sure. Yeah. Sure. You could. I guess you can take the position that you think it is worse if it has racist intent. I guess. Uh. Yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. I. I would just. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about in relation to just not hiring a person because they're, because you don't like them. Is that what you're referencing? Sure. Yeah. Uh. So you. Yeah, would, so you would. Sure. So you would make. Sure. So you would specifically, I guess, if it has, if we can prove that it has racist, racist intent, then you would make yeah, that a crime. Yeah, yeah. And same with being transphobic. But like, I, I don't think the same protection should apply to like being a fan of Batman. I don't think that you should. I think that if somebody thinks that like, I don't know, for whatever reason, your job might get impeded by that. You know, I might give a better example that, like, you shouldn't have to do that. Or you should have to refer... I hate Batman, okay? Yeah, I know, right? Um, that you should have to do that. Like, you have to recognize that your employee is a fan of Batman under threat of law or something like that. It's like, I don't, I don't think you should have to do that. Okay, but, yeah. interesting. But you, but you would do that if we could show... Uh, that societally people a lot of people commit suicide if they do not get recognized as fans of batman then you would flip that position um right? i it it really does depend um it it's a really so i'll i'll grant you this if it is a culturally pervasive thing that we believe isn't stemming from anything else other than the acceptance of them broadly in society yeah because there are, the, I, I mean, we could have an example of like, what if there was a bunch of fascist people that were killing themselves because fascism hadn't been brought about? Like, that doesn't necessarily, like, just simply hurting yourself isn't an argument for me to just, like, do it in and yeah, of itself. There needs to be, yeah, like, but that, mm -hmm. sure. I guess, yeah, but that's, I guess that's sort of the argument that I would be making is that I don't really care about sort of the necessarily the social pervasiveness of the issue i care more about like how do i in general feel about this like do i i think this is a good or a bad thing and i don't necessarily care about the societal oh, I, effects. I care about i care about the societal effects for the the point of moral condemnation i'm not going to morally condemn somebody who on the bus like let me give you an example somebody on the bus says hi to you you say fuck off that person kills themselves are you a piece of shit uh no, I don't think so. Wait, why? Because I, well, because I don't, I don't think that uh, your actions. Well, I don't think we could say that your actions necessarily led to them doing that. Okay, what if you now say somebody says hi to you and you know that they're on the brink of suicide and if you say fuck off to them, they're going to uh, kill themselves. If you knowingly, sure. If you I, okay, I if, if you, you have a very know. reasonable expectation that they're going to kill themselves, would you say then that? it is wrong to say fuck off to them. Yeah, huh? I would say so. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the cultural pervasiveness matters. I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that gender matters a fucking lot to a lot more people than they act like they do. Like, there's a lot of cis people, ah, gender, like, doesn't matter that much. It's bullshit. You know, like, we, we know this is bullshit. You call them a, you call some dude a pussy, you'll freak the fuck out or whatever. You call them, a, like, a lady, they'll, they'll be like, what the fuck, bro? Right? And uh, so we, we know shit matters a lot more than what people say. And so I would say being sensitive about especially gender, which 
which is like omnipresent in our society is really important because of that cultural pervasiveness. It brings up the bar for reasonable expectation that it matters a lot in somebody's life. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you yeah, can't, you can't I, just go, I guess... oh, I didn't think gender mattered very much to the trans person. Bull fucking shit. You've looked at the state of the way that, the, you know, society works and how much, you know, a lot of society shits on trans people. Bull fucking shit. You can't use that as an excuse. But you could use that as an excuse to some random person on the bus that says hi to you and that you tell to fuck off. And so that's why the cultural pervasiveness matters. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I guess I would just... Uh, I guess I I think that there is uh I guess there's a line there somewhere. I guess we yeah, just there, have to there, agree there is a... like where the line is. Yeah, exactly. And I would argue that on that line, me saying I am turtle gender, that falls into the same side of the line as me not saying hi to that person on the bus. Like, there's no massive cultural push to like say turtle genders suck or turtle genders can't do this or that or anything like that it's been more abstinent uh, on in regards to that like just haven't really referred to it but there's been massive amounts of push and there currently is massive amount of push every single moment that you exist you cannot like escape some kind of gendered uh expression and shit wherever you go you can't escape that but you can escape like gendered stereotypes about turtles you know, you can't escape that. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're probably never going to see it. I mean, I mean, unless you talk about that, that was that uh, old turtle kid show or whatever, where the guy was wearing the like, the uh, fucking ascot or whatever, the little bandana around his neck. I, it, yeah, that's, that's the only. With Ninja Turtles? No. Oh well, yeah. Ninja Turtles as well. But like, uh, no, I was thinking of the, the other meme. There was Teenage a. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, it's like Har Harlan. I, I think Franklin. Thank you. It's Franklin the turtle. Like, unless you want to talk about Franklin the turtle, you know, we don't have very many gendered expressions of turtles. And so that's why I care. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm not sure. I guess the, right. the only thing, uh, yeah, Can the only ahead? thing I would say is that I actually, I don't like that conclusion necessarily. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily like the conclusion that we ought to change uh, these things based off of like a societal perception of those um so i would i think i'd have to think about that a bit more um, what do you mean change what things specifically sure I don't, I don't think we should necessarily change how we uh act or like how we ought to act based upon like societal perceptions or consequences of or perceived consequences of those perceptions um i think we should be more rooted in something that isn't necessarily societal. Well, no, uh, I, I, I agree sense. that we could we could avoid discrimination of people on principle, but that principle, ultimately, the moral condemnation that we apply that principle with will depend on our reasonable understanding of the, the mindset that the person is in. Do you understand what I mean there? Yeah, but I'm... Yeah, that, but that's the thing that I'm not necessarily sure I agree with. Like, it sounds like I should agree with it, um, but I'm not necessarily sure I agree, and that's I why understand. I think I'll have to think about yeah, it a bit more. Because, um, okay. right. yeah. Okay. All right. All right, well, well uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was good, good talk, talking man. to you. Yeah, you're definitely yeah, the, sure. the person with the best take on this I've heard, so congratulations on that. Like, Dude, uh, sometimes, listen, sometimes... It's it's good to just brainstorm things and uh, and think and talk to some people about it because mm -hmm. I think because uh, I don't know I don't really like assuming that I have the correct position necessarily because I think yep. at the start I I actually I had I think I had hundred uh, percent I'm not necessarily sure if it was like your position or whatever but I think I changed my position along the way here mm. um, I think it's it's good to do that sometimes at least think about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, you, you definitely hit me with in, in a spot where I hadn't heard an argument from your, from that specific angle, uh, which is cool. It's cool to hear that argument. Uh, much love, brother. Right. Yeah, good talk, man. See you. Yep. Wait, Dario, do you stream? Should I shout you out? Do you stream? I don't know if you still stream. I'm not sure if I got unfollowed by you. Here, hold up. No, I don't really stream. Oh, okay. All right. No yelling and screaming, resident sleeper. Chill. Gen